For example, we have finished preparing the scene, the materials, the lights and everything. We just need to render it so that it becomes resources that we can use for post-processing later on. Now, we could, have, we could have rendered it to become a short animation clip straight away. But in true practice, we do not do that. We would normally render them into a series of still pictures so that later on, we can recompose them or we can post-process them by adding in music, text and other after effects in order to prepare a complete clip. Okay, it helps us in our directorship and editing as well. All right. Now, to do this, we go to rendering. We go to render setup. And in doing this, we have always been using the single, under the time, common parameters, time output, we have always been using single. Now we are going to change it to active time segment here, 0 to 100, for example, because down here we have only set up the time segment to be 0 to 100. So we're going to use the active time segment and then we will set up what to render. Okay, we're going to look for the view. And next, we are going to look at the render resolution, the output size. Remember, the submission requirement was full HD. Okay. Therefore, we are going to change it from this output size from custom all the way down to HD TV, this one. And you will notice that the resolution will be 1920 by 1080. And from here, we need to make sure we save the files properly. So under the render output segment here, we are going to click files. And we need to designate the proper folder to save the renderings because we are talking about a whole bunch of images. So therefore, I will give it I will set up a new folder and give it a logical name. I will call it, let's say, human entering clip. Okay. And then I will put it here. I will call it human hm01, for example. And I will save the output format. I can either save them to AVI file. Okay, if I only wanted a short clip, but I don't want that. I want to save them to a series of JPEG files. And then I will click save. And I will make sure it is the best quality here. And I will click OK. Before I would start the render. Now, once I start rendering, the render process will generate 100 images of this in series and sequences. So let me show you very quickly how this is now done. It is very, very gradual because it takes 30 frames to render one second of time. All right, so that will be the formula you can regard. Okay, one second of time here equals to 30 frames, 30 images. It will just hold on for a while here. And that's why it needs to be no nothing, okay? Let me just run over and show you what happens in the folder itself. You will now notice we are going to have a series of images being generated from the rendering. More and more and more until it reaches 100.
You can see the render progress at the top left hand corner here, stating frame number what. Okay, I will explain to you later once this is done what happened. Okay, so rendering is complete. Now, back to why we insist that you do this. You know, the question being, I could have just rendered this whole thing in, the, in an AVI file. Why do I want to do this? It's so tedious. It knocks out 100 frames. It's huge. If I have a, if I have a 3,000 clip video to do, it will be, be 3,000 files. The only key rationale in doing this is very, very troublesome, really. In reality, it is. The only, the only reason why we do this is because this is insurance policy. Okay, why do I say that? Now, many a times when we do rendering, because of the way we set up the files or the cameras, there is a high possibility that halfway through the rendering, from 0 to 100, frame number 79, for example, may hang and crash the system. There will be situations where our brothers and sisters do not know why we left the computers running at, the, at, at such a late time at night, conveniently decides to switch off the power supply, and the computer shuts down at frame number 47 rendering. Importantly, bear in mind, if we were to set the frame to be saved or the clip to be saved into an AVI file, you just lost all the rendering you have done earlier on. But you, if you have set them to render still images one at a time, you will lose the very last rendering you have. For example, frame number 83. Computer got shut down. Computer hang. Max dies. Okay, power supply got cut off. You will lose frame number 83. All the way to 100, you lost it. Tomorrow, when you wake up and you look at it, oh shit, I lost it. But you will still have frames number 1 to number 82. So you will continue your rendering from under active time segments here. You will use range from 83 to 100. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That means you do not render the whole thing all over again, but you only render the remaining ones that you do not have and finish off the clip. Clear? Okay. And then from there, you patch it in. There are many, 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 many software that will allow you to do this software patches once it is done. Okay. And then what happens is, When you have these rendered already, you already have the base for the animation. It's like clips, basically. You have one frame at a time. You just need to find the software to put them all together and render them with music. And that's it. You are done. Are we being quite clear here? Any questions on this part? Okay. If not, then excellent.